Building and Contracts Committee for Tuesday, March 19th, 2019. Mr. Saris and Mr. Dixit, would you please come forward? Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And Mr. Sears, if you would please yes. present our first contract. First item is MBU 519-19, Emergency Evacuation Equipment and Accessories. This is a new competitively bid contract for the provision of emergency evacuation equipment and accessories to support student and staff in multi-level schools and offices. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $250,000. Questions? Ms. Rowe? So specifically, what are we buying with this? The emergency evacuation equipment looks uh, almost like a little canoe, if you will, um, and um, and then the the individual is strapped onto that piece. Oh, there you go. Yes. So this and it helps us get people out of the building, basically. That is correct. Okay. Other questions. Hearing none, thank you. Okay. Second item, CWA 101-19, Catering Services for New Teacher Orientation. This is a new competitively bid contract to provide catering services for the new teacher orientation meetings to be held during the months of August 2019 through 2021. Approval is requested for a three-year contract with spending authority of $81,000. Questions, board members? Hearing none, next item. Next item is ARA 914-19, Leadership Courses and Seminars. This is a new cooperative administration of programs contract for a variety of non-credit courses, primarily for non-certificated employees in specific training areas and general leadership development. Approval is requested for a three-year, two-month contract and contract spending authority of $297,000 with Community College of Baltimore County. Thank you. These sound like some terrific offerings. I, I did want to ask if we are expanding the offerings with this approval, um, given the lifetime expenditures and the requested authority, um, either in the number of individuals that will be able to take advantage of this or through the types of courses being offered? A little bit of both. Okay. Um, well, we found a few programs that were being offered in schools that we want to include in this the conversation we've had a couple of times, sometimes schools spend things themselves, so we're incorporating those into the contract, and we are hoping to have uh, a few of the courses were canceled in the three-year cycle before, and we're hoping to be able to have all of those um, filled this year. So. Thank you. And do you know um, approximately how many individuals will be able, will be served by oh, my. these courses? If you had to put a ballpark, each each class we run it between around 16 people in each class. Mm -hmm. So if we did the math on 16, um, it, that would and then in the Spanish programs are for a whole school office, and the project management ones would be, um, and the customer service programs would be a whole office as well. So Great. it's a good number. Great. And does the authority cover the demand for these classes? Is I think this so. sufficient? Yeah, I think so. To think anyone so. who would want. And we do do evaluations, and they've been very successful. So. Fantastic. Other questions? Ms. Rowe. So when we see the word cooperative, this says it's a new cooperative administration of programs. Does that mean like the books in the gym clothes? No, this uh, is a special provision um, under the state code that mm -hmm. allows education agencies uh, and other to work together where they have programs that uh, c could benefit one another. Is there language on this form so that I can stop calling that type of thing the gym clothes and the books? 
Like, what is yeah. there an industry specific word oh. that means the schools are buying the stuff and then we're having a contract that represents all the stuff they're already buying? Uh, well, the generic term, I guess, for the school purchases are uh, school activity funds or school activity accounts. Um, this is not what that is. Yeah. Okay. Um, the contract is the uh, statute that we're using to have a relationship with another government agency, in this case, the school, okay. the community college. The issue I was talking about was, I think the word you're looking for is school spend. When okay. a school decides Because you mentioned to spend something money, in your comments yeah. that made me think that this was school like that. School themselves can use their, their own funds to offer a course, in this case, conversational Spanish. So that would be a school fund decision. So there's so some that would here. be a, a different group of people. So again, school spend, I think, is what you're looking for is the term is if the school makes the decision to spend versus my office offering the program on behalf of employees. And so there's some of both in this contract? Correct. Okay. And the term cooperative, Ms. Rowe, refers to the procurement method that applies here okay. um, versus an RFP, which does not apply, which would be a competitively bid contract when partnering with another government entity, as was stated, that cooperative um, contract becomes an option for procurement. Okay. You're welcome. Mr. McMillian. I noticed a couple of the, the bullets point to a certificate of professional cer cer certification or professional development. Are the employees inclined to pursue the, the actual, it's not a degree, but the certification? Uh, um, that line is specifically for information technology, and that's for project management certification. Um, the, uh, we have had some individuals that sort of get the education bug by participating in the CCBC courses, and have got, we've over the years worked with um, William Burke's office to offer um, some associate degree cohorts, a certificate cohort. So yeah, it does happen. Um, these are aimed at people that want to be better in their current job. Um, but some of them do get excited about education and continue. So. Thank you. Thank you. And my question um, couples off Mr. McMillian's with regards to the IT project management coursework. Mm -hmm. If that prepares these individuals for whether it's PMI certification. It does. It does. It does. Great. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Next item. Okay. The next item, JB0703-19. Field trip transportation services. This is a new competitively bid contract for field trip transportation services for the Office of Transportation. Approval is requested for a five year contract with 15 recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $10 million. Mr. McMillian? I'm going to attempt a joke here. Is this kind of like the gem suit account? <laughs> it is. About half of it, about uh, 5.2 million of our previous expenditures are for school field trips, most of which uh, are funded by student contributions. Uh, about two and a quarter million is for schools and, uh, schools and offices who are chartering a bus. Um, and about 1.2 million of it is for uh, grant-related projects. So, it, and I'm not being difficult, but it's, it's hard for me to fathom a, a transportation system, Mr. West, that ha we have eight or 900 buses, and I know drivers are a, an issue, obviously, but to, to allocate or to, you know, set aside $10 million for field trips, that, that we can't do ourselves? Do you see where I'm coming from with that? Sure. Uh, so the majority of field trips um, that, are, that go through this contract are trips that we would not be able to do because they're done during our yeah. one times. So if a school needs to leave early in the morning or they're coming back during times we're delivering students, um, that is our first and foremost goal. So that's where all of our resources are, um, are aligned. So if it's overnight trips or it's trips during times where we're transporting students to and from school, that's where this contract comes into play. Okay. And Mr. George, the, the thing about if the 
kids are paying for the trip. Let's say let's say somebody's going to the zoo in Washington or going to going to Washington D.C. Now, the children, as part of that field trip, they're paying for that bus, and it goes back to like the gym suits. Right. So they're paying for the gym suits. So I'm I'm still confused on if the students are paying for the for the trip, and that money's going to pay for the bus. Just like the kids buying the gym suits are paying for the gym suit themselves. They're getting a gym suit. That school is paying for the gym suits. Why is this money setting aside? You know, I, the money's not uh, sitting anywhere. It's just as a trip is planned, they take up the contributions. And of course, each school has arrangements for children who aren't able to afford, and the difference is made up in a variety of ways, but predominantly on, uh, you know, field trips, the students are paying most of those fares. But the money is not, there's not $10 million or $5 million in a budget anywhere that is board funds. Now the athletics office, for instance, has its own budget for transportation. transportation. And, and much of the spending here is, you know, for that purpose as well. Yeah, now I understand that piece because, you know, through the athletic office, each school received X number of dollars right. for their field trips three times a year or for their athletic trips. And then if we didn't have that, you know, for whatever reason we overspent that, then we were responsible, the local school, to pay for that, you know, to make up that difference. Right. And fortunately, when I, had my, when I got my CDL, then we were in a situation where I was never in the red again. I was always in the black with that piece. Uh, so I'm just trying to understand this. And we this. still do that, you know, make, I think, make buses available for teachers and staff who have CDLs. We still do so. that. Oh, yeah. yeah. In fact, Wayne Hopkins in the back, Wayne helped me years ago get the bus for Chesapeake High School. Mm -hmm. uh, so t there was a reserve bus at Chesapeake High School anytime I needed it. You know, I made the arrangements. I called the dispatcher or emailed the dispatcher and said, this is what my plan is for the week. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if I was on a real pinch, I got a bus in a matter of hours if I needed it, if somebody backed out or whatever, you know, because of a cancellation or a mistake or something. So that was a great benefit to the local school mm -hmm. because nobody, nobody ever asked for remuneration for diesel fuel, maintenance, anything. Uh, all I had to do was pay for the, you know, the somehow work out the driver out of my budget, but that was a great part of it. Uh, and that is still done at certain schools that can house buses. Um, we still do have buses assigned to, 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 to different schools, and those schools that have teachers with CDLs, then we have buses at the bus lots that are assigned, that are reserved, that if they could just contact us and say, I'm coming on X day to get the bus, do we still work that plan out with various high schools? Yeah, Chesapeake High School, we didn't have the, a place to lock it up, so I would go to Hopkins Creek exactly. and pick it up whenever exactly. I needed it. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Ms. Rao? So I think to um, get to Mr. McMillian's point, I think what you're struggling with, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is the difference between a contract spending authority and the funding source. So the contract spending authority is the max that we're allowing the school system to spend before the board has to approve more money. But the funding source right underneath that is operating budget, student activity funds, and grants. So it's not like um, we're saying spend $10 million or hold $10 million, what we're saying is the school system's allowed to make the decisions to spend or not to spend up to that much. But ultimately, when we're saying the funding source is student activity funds, that's a revenue source for the school system. Does that make sense? So it is like the gym clothes thing in a certain the sense. The budget is set. It, you can think of it like a line of credit. The purchasing authority is the amount that can be spent up to that amount that we're approving the the purchasing authority. The budget is is what the budget is. Right. And, and schools cannot spend beyond the money allocated toward them in the budget. But against this contract, that is the maximum allowed spending against it in in whole for the system right. as a and whole. my understanding is that for these things, when these contract and spending authorities come to us, the research to make sure that all of this money is according to the budget has already been done. Correct. Correct. Okay. And, and a key piece would be the approved vendors in this, right? I mean, the I'm, 15 vendors or whatever there are listed? Yes. 
Correct. In other words, they, we can reach out to any or all of them to get a quote to see who's available on, you know, April 22nd to go to the National Zoo. And can, do you have two buses or can you take 100 kids? And, and we get, we have pre, uh, the pricing here is provided based on the, the number of hours and or whether it's an overnight or long distance trip beyond one day. And each vendor has a price that they've bid, and the schools will get, you know, get quotes from the the most competitive priced vendor they can, who's available. But we have these 15 options. Yeah, and there's a lot of variations in those price when it comes to mileage and hours. Right. Yes. And then when you consider deadhead miles too. That is correct. Uh, is there deadhead in this? I don't remember. So when in the new contract, we tried to mitigate that a little bit. Um, it's charged portal to portal. So basically the, the vendors are charging when they pick up at the school and they drop off. Now that's a real change because if you consider Woodlawn coming to Essex, you know, for the people who don't understand deadhead miles, mm -hmm. you know, in the old way, they would charge from Woodlawn, from the lot, to Chesapeake High School, pick us up and take us wherever, and then when they dropped us off, they would charge us from Chesapeake High School back to the lot. So you might be looking at 60 miles there of times, you know, if they wanted $3 and some cents a mile. Uh, so that's taken off the table. We modified the, the, the there was a change in this new contract. So that would affect athletic trips? Yeah, most of these prices uh, do not seem to have a deadhead mile like we do. We still have with regular daily school bus transportation contracts. That's still a provision uh, for the contractors who um, work every day to take children to school and back. But in this contract, I don't see that provision anymore okay. and your day-to-day -day runs those those lots would probably be closer to where they're actually doing the runs when you say mr west if, if harris bus is doing a bunch of runs they're going to do runs in the middle river essex kingsville area absolutely right absolutely yes where when you get in a pension you ha you need a bus and you can't get a bus and you have to go to woodlawn then that's where the deadhead miles came into athletic trips correct because you you know you wanted somebody as close as you could to your school to try to save you know save on the cost thank you Thank you. Gentlemen, do we know the cost per mile difference between using our own buses and drivers versus chartered services? What that per mile difference would be, approximately? It would depend on the vendor and what the purpose is. So the contract is written that they can charge a per mile rate or they can charge a flat rate. Mm -hmm. um, so it would depend on the trip and it would depend on the vendor. But so we do have a set rate that we that it cost the BCPS bus to run, mm -hmm. we just can compare that to all of the vendors. And what would that be roughly? Could you give us a range in terms of, are we talking 25% more to use charter? Are we talking 50% more? Across vendors, what would you say that differential? So of course we'd have be? to only compare it to school buses because the, the this contract does include motor coaches as well and we don't have motor coaches, so we don't only compare it to school, school buses. School bus to school bus. Right, apples and to apples. I, I don't have that at, at my fingertips, but we can easily provide that. I mean, are we talking 200% above? I, I want to understand what the impact to our school budgets is by using chartered versus our own transportation, because my concern is that if we have not allocated <coughs> increases in school-based funding, but yet we're compensating for our own lack of drivers by asking them to use chartered services, how are we making that adjustment so that Schools shouldn't have to choose whether to, to do a field trip or not if their only option is charter transportation and if it's considerably more costly than to use our own drivers. Do you understand? Does that make sense? Completely understand, yes. Okay. I could take a guess at that. I, if, if I'm not mistaken, it was 20 some dollars an hour for a county bus That's as correct. compared to maybe Woodlawn. Woodlawn was high. They were always, you know, somewhere, say, 35 or so dollars. Mm -hmm. And then when you looked at mileage per mile, Baltimore County's mile, the mileage rate was like two dollars and something. 241. Yeah. Versus Woodlawn might be three and a quarter or 330 or something. So there's a difference between those. So it does depend on the, the number of hours, the number of miles that are that are driven for any given trip. Um, 
so I'm, I'm, I'm reticent to say, give you a, a, a specific dollar amount. In the past, I know on the old contract, it would not be uncommon to see um, a BCPS bus cost $300 for a trip, for example, and you might have a contractor's bus cost 500 or 550. Right. But and again, that, that, that variation, it, it varies significantly depending on the trip and the number of hours, the number of miles. Sure. And personally, I, I see the advantages of using charter on some cases on trips that require, like you said, transportation outside of or during the run time, our normal run times when using Absolutely. BCPS transportation is prohibitive. And I've been on trips that it took us longer to get to the destination than the actual time sure. at the destination because we were reliant on BCPS transportation outside of the run times. So sure. yeah, there certainly is an advantage to the and flexibility we, available with, with charter transportation. Certain trips we don't do. If it's, for example, out of state, then we know that that's going to be a go to a contractor. But mm -hmm. if it is um, during that transport window, we reserve our resources f to transport students sure. to and from school. But I think it is important for this board to understand the impact of our current driver shortage on um, such things as field trips and the, and the impact on the schoolhouse budget. Absolutely. Ms. Rowe. So one of the things I, I'd like you to speak to is since we have transportation issues with a shortage of drivers, um, but my concern is that are there ever situations where we're dependent on the BCPS bus and people call out and routes have to be rerouted in such a way that they're either late or canceled because of the reorganization of too many drivers calling out or not having enough drivers. It, does that situation in our transportation department contribute to the need for contracting field trip buses? Because these field trips get paid for. You wouldn't want to have to cancel it or have kids not go because a bus wasn't available. So is this how we're preventing that sort of a thing from happening because our own transportation department has certain fluctuating dependability issues. So typically when Baltimore County is um, managing a field trip, it is going to be um, 9, 45, 10 o'clock to that 1 o'clock window. Um, that is done intentionally so that we have more drivers available. So even if there were um, delays getting students to school, for example, then you have literally 600, 700 drivers coming back. Um, and then we can't just pick from any of them, but we have a much larger number of drivers to, to select to say, I need you to cover this field trip if one were <laughs> open for, for whatever reason. Um, but when we are accepting a field trip in the middle of the day, that's, we have staff available. So we also have standbys available to cover if someone else is not available. So there's redundancies built in, um, and that is done to protect the ability to service that field trip. Okay, so we're not utilizing contract busing services so that um, it's not a transportation operational problem that we have that's causing us to use more expensive contracts. It's because the field trip is happening during run times? Field trip is happening during run times or the, the demand is significantly great. So say for example, there is um, a certain area just has a lot of field trips going on in one or two days, 30 or 40 field trips. Well, even at full capacity, that's not something that we typically see on a regular basis. So we don't staff for that on a regular basis. If we know about it ahead of time, we will try to do so. Um, but we also remember during the middle of the day, we have um, pre-K, preschool running. So we have other things that are happening, CBI trips. Um, and we schedule all of that and, and combine field trips in with it. So we do have a, a, a limit to the number of field trips that we would take. Um, especially given a certain window, we ask at least two weeks. When we exceed our, our capacity, then we will coordinate to see if they can change days. So we'll do whatever we can to still run that field trip in the middle of the day because we know it is a cost saving. It's more uh, efficient for schools. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. West. Absolutely. Okay. 
Mr. Dixon, hey, do you have the uh, or Mr. Saris, next item? Next item, ARA 218-19, fuel gasoline and diesel transport and tank wagon. This is a new cooperative contract for the purchase and delivery of no lead reformulated gasoline with ethanol and ultra low sulfur diesel fuel for the Department of Facilities Management and Business Services Operations. Approval is requested for a three year, three month contract with the option for three one-year extensions with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $30 million over the uh, term of the agreement. Uh, this is a cooperative agreement with Baltimore County government who uh, is the lead agency and who did the advertising and bidding uh, for these prices. Thank you. So my question, one question you may not be able to answer since it is a cooperative with Baltimore County government, but I'm curious as to the terms and the pricing offered with the terms as is versus a longer um, contract duration, the three one-year extensions. Is there a rationale that you that can speak to? That is typically how the county structures their extensions, uh, one year at a time after the initial term. Uh, the pricing here, uh, is all based on the petroleum or the gasoline spot market. So all the bids are a few cents over, a few cents under the the current price. And then it's delivered, uh, there's a delivery rate, and then depending on whether it's a full tanker truck at 10,000 gallons or something less, there's a different rate factor for that. So I can just tell you that in, November and December, we were paying $1.96 to $1.98 per gallon for diesel fuel, which is our primary uh, product under this agreement. Okay. But it will vary over this term, and uh, if, if the county decides not to exercise an extension, we'll still probably work with them on a successor bid. So those extensions would, I imagine, allow for maximum flexibility should yes. another supplier be desired. Correct. Or should something that hasn't happened in a while, but a lot of market volatility can affect these contracts, and it may, uh, depending on what's going on in the market, it may suit them. In the past, we've done a fixed price per gallon, right. which is different than this indexed pricing method. Okay. Thank you. Board members, other questions? No? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank next you. Next item, please. The next item, MWE 808-19, Maryland Transit Administration, bus passes and tokens. This is a new cooperative administration of programs contract for MTA bus passes and tokens for the Office of Transportation. Approval is requested for a five-year, three-month contract with one recommended bidder and spending authority of $350,000. Okay. Questions? Ms. Rowe? Under what circumstances are we using the MTA buses as opposed to transporting students ourselves? I know that one group uh, of students are homeless students. Uh, Mr. West, if you have any other uh, scenarios. Sure. So the there's actually two groups of students who were um, using for this, um, who will benefit from this contract. The primary group are students who are experiencing homelessness, um, and the bus passes will be purchased for them. And it's actually in an, an effort to mitigate hurdles that they're experiencing. Mm -hmm. So on a daily basis, the students will go and they'll see their um, PPW or their homeless liaison in the school, and they'll get bus tokens. So we're transitioning from tokens to bus passes that will be valid for a period of 30 days. Um, should the child not need the pass anymore, we can deactivate it through the MTA's website, um, but they will have a bus pass. It will allow them to um, go to and from school. It will also allow them flexibility outside of normal school hours so they can participate in after school activities. But um, to answer your question, it is generally for students who are experiencing homelessness who live um, outside of the county by and large. 
Another group is um, we're working with um, extended day learning program and students who will be attending evening school or extended day programs will also have this as a transportation option. We do have some school buses running, but they will have this as a transportation option as well. And approximately how many students will this contract serve? We're going to start out, um, the Title I office is managing this, um, so they're starting out and they're estimating it uh, initially at 100, approximately 100 students. Thank you. Other questions? Hearing none, thank you. Next item, please. Next item, MBU 504-18, Office Supplies. This is a contract modification to continue provide the purchase of office supplies and equipment for schools and offices. Approval is requested to extend the contract for 11 months with one awarded vendor approved by the board in October 2017. Uh, this is a, a, a national consortium contract and uh, that expires in 11 months, which is why we're uh, asking for this uh, modification to the spending term. Okay. So is the consortium agreement also being extended, which is why we're extending our contract? Yes. That's, yes. Thank you. Other questions, board members? Okay. Thank you. Next item. Okay. Next item is ARA. 216-19 wireless services. This is a new cooperative contract to provide staff mobile devices and, and a service plan for the Department of Facilities Management and Information Technology. Approval is requested for a one year, one month contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $100,000. Questions, board members. Ms. Rowe. Uh, do we already have a contract for wireless services and why are we doing a separate contract for, for this? So a number of offices in these departments had individual Verizon agreements for, e uh, for either flip phones, uh, smartphones, and uh, we decided to bring everything together under one contract. And uh, this is, uh, as you see, just a one year, one month contract. During this time, we're going to be considering uh, a variety of options, whether we continue to use board owned phones or whether we blend that with stipends or radios because a new radio program is being developed and uh, once we study that impact uh, we may present something differently than than what we have here which is currently about 200 board owned phones and a variety of hotspots for home and hospital students and and IT technicians who work remotely so is this um, primarily for like job sites where we have yes these are field employees primarily maintenance technicians plumbers electricians IT technicians who are all operating in the field so they move around correct they, they don't have office phones thank you mr. McMillian mrs. Mack is sitting over there but I have a question or two she can you want to do your own questions or She's got a couple questions she shared with me that I'm, I don't understand anything about reseller of a service. So if, uh, why are these devices and plans provided by Verizon through a reseller of service rather than directly from Verizon? Um, I'm not aware that that is the case, but Melanie, do you? No. The Selco partnership, does that come around someplace? Good afternoon. How are you? This is who responded to the solicitation. Verizon directly did not respond. 
and this is a state, isn't this a state general services? Yes, it is. Agreement, so they, this is a statewide contract that we're uh, using through State Department of General Services. And as I said, it's just a, a temporary one-year proposal at this point. So when you put it out to bid, Selco was the only one that responded? Is that? Well, this is the vendor that was uh, selected from the three bids by the State Department of General Services. It was not okay. put out to bid directly. Correct. It's a, it's a cooperative or cooperative yeah. contract because the state's already or piggyback meaning we're using an, the GSA contract that was already put out to bid thank you thank you thank you other okay. questions hearing none thank you next item good afternoon next next contract is MBU 50619 for asbestos abatement services I just want, I'd like to provide some general information. All buildings built before BCPS, or before 1990, they have asbestos, or we assume <coughs> that they have asbestos. Anything that's built after 1990, uh, we have a letter from the architect that it does not have asbestos, to the best of their knowledge. And uh, all of these efforts are clearly defined in AHERA Act of 1986. So our asbestos removal is pretty much guided by requirements of AHERA Act. It, uh, it is quite detailed. It, it has notification process. It has that every school should have asbestos management plan. It requires training of all the employees in facilities department. So this, as soon as we get information about a potential asbestos, yeah. this contract is used for removing that asbestos. And since we know where the asbestos is present under the asbestos management plan, um, we are quite knowledgeable about it and we make uh, efforts in advance. All of the removal is done when the building is unoccupied by students as much as we can try that. And during the removal time, a lot of times you see uh, a balloon kind of structure around that piece with negative pressure. So every precaution is included in the requirements of AHERA. So this contractor or this list of contractors, they are certified and asbestos is removed uh, by certified contractors. Thank you. Ms. Rao? Approximately how many schools are affected and what types of asbestos are we removing? Uh, like I said, all of the buildings that are built before 1990 have asbestos in them. Um, uh, I don't have exact number how many were built before 1990, but uh, 120, 130 buildings, we can assume they were built 19, before 1990. Building may have asbestos in it, but we don't remove it if it is encapsulated. The asbestos is removed when it gets into friable state or has the potential of getting into friable state. Or if it is located at a high risk location, then we take, make an effort to remove that asbestos. So is there anything that we're doing to notify students or parents as to where, what are we doing in the meantime before it's removed to protect the student body and to notify parents about where these locations of asbestos that need to be removed are? Asbestos management plan is prepared by an independent consultant and it is located in every school. It is available electronically and it is located in our central office. If there is any activity of asbestos removal that may have an impact on a student, we make every effort to notify students and the notification process is included in the calendar that is issued to all the schools and everybody in the BCPS. Thank you. So the, the funding source listed are both operating and capital budgets. Yeah. Is that because, is the capital budget used when the asbestos removal is associated with a capital improvement project? That's correct. And So uh, it's done in as, conjunction with, yes. for instance, That's an right. expansion. And, yes, and if we know there is asbestos, mm -hmm. 
even if the building is demolished, asbestos has to be removed before the demolition is completed. That's the requirement. Thank you. So. Mr. McMillian? And so if we have approximately 120 schools that have asbestos in them, we don't, this is for those schools, if, if let's say a plumber, electrician, some craftsman's in the building working and he somehow disturbs the existing asbestos, then they go into the management plan and shut the school down or whatever to remove the asbestos? If a plumber is working at a location where we know there is asbestos, we remove asbestos first and then plumber works. It is very common for a lot of vinyl tiles to have asbestos in the mastic that was used. So if we are gonna remove those tiles, the first thing we do is remove asbestos and then, then the tiles are removed. So it is quite an elaborate process, almost like a surgery, but that's the requirement in the AHIRA Act. Yeah. But, and just to understand, so if you have a school that's not doing any special, you know, construction work in it, that school's basically left alone? That's right. If it, if it is not high risk, like this is an old building, I'm sure it has asbestos somewhere, but if it doesn't get into friable state, we don't remove it. Thank but you. if we knew that there was a piping behind you, which is a high risk item, then we'll remove it. So a judgment call has to be made if the, if the asbestos is not in friable state. Thank you. Thank you. Board members, do I have a motion to forward items H1 through H9 to the full board for approval? Second. All in favor? And the motion carries. And we Thank are adjourned. You. Thank you, gentlemen.